Good morning, Emmanuel. What a great song uh, about God's love. I want to talk about that this morning, about God's love for us. We would all say we understand that. Uh, just to kind of tell you what we're going to do this morning, we're going <clears> to <throat> talk a little bit about this topic of God's unconditional love, and then we're going to have a time of prayer at the end. I've noticed that it's pretty common this year that we, we pray for one another, which is a great idea to pray for one another for the needs we have. So God's unconditional love. What do you love? We all would say there's things in life that we love. Uh, let's take a poll. How many love pizza? Quite a few people. Good thing to love. We love pizza. How many love football? A lot, yeah, yeah, a lot of football lovers. How many love a new pair of shoes? Oh, yes. My wife's got a whole closet full of them. I love new pair of shoes. Maybe I love my boyfriend or girlfriend. Eh, don't want to give that away. Okay. <laughs> we love we love stuff. We've all heard God loves you, right? We, we just sang about it, that God loves us so much. And what does that mean? Is that for everybody in life? Is that based off of something I need to do or maybe not do to get God's love? And all humanity desires to be loved. Everybody that's created uh, believes in God, doesn't believe in God, young, old, rich, poor, Humanity is created with this intense desire to be loved. And so we're made that way, and it, it comes with us. And so sometimes we struggle with believing that God really loves us. Maybe you struggle. I have in the past. Struggled that God really loves me. Just If you have ever struggled in any time of your life that God really loves you, just, just raise your hand. Anybody? Yeah, a lot, a lot of us. We, we do that. It happens in life. And here's, here's kind of the uh, top three reasons I've seen for people who sometimes struggle with really believing that God loves them. First one, I haven't really given my whole life to Jesus, so he loves me less. Like I, I, I give my life to Christ, but I really... I really don't make him the center focus of how I live my day to day, and I know that, and so because of that, I, I, I think that he loves me a little less. Maybe it's I did something wrong and I knew it was wrong, so he's probably mad at me and loves me a little less. Sometimes we have that kind of concept, and maybe it's I've uh, th horrible things have happened to me in my life that I can't explain that were not my fault at all. So probably he loves me a little less. I've felt this way in the past. Some of you might feel that way today about your life and how God loves you or not. Let's look at Romans 8, 35. We're going to see a few scriptures today before we pray, but here's a, a great one. Romans 8, 35. It says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Now, Paul here is not really asking the question. Uh, it's, it's a rhetorical question. He's really saying, nothing. Who shall separate us? He's making a point about who might separate us from the love of Christ. And then he gets this long list of stuff. Tribulation is a stress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword. I think today the thing that really impacts us the most are, are the first two. Trouble and distress. Those really kind of stick out to us in our world as a, as a teenager, in the life you live. Trouble, it means to have difficulty or problems. Does anybody have difficulties or, or problems going on? Yeah, yeah. And then this word distressed means extremely, extreme anxiety, sorrow, or pain. And that, that we just heard last week, a lot of people responded to, to Joe's message about an overwhelming amount of anxiety and then sorrow and pain. And so he's, what is he saying here? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And then he names some things that w what we bite, what he's saying is these things usually will pull at you and try to make you think or feel like it's separating you. See, Paul knows that the, the tension here is that these things are trying to, to 
change the way we think and feel about God's love to us when they're in our life. But look at verse 37. He says, no. No, it, it, in all these things, and really he means no, in the middle of all these things. So it's not like if you have troubles or tribulations or trials or situations going on in your life, that doesn't detach you from God's love. That doesn't make God love you less. He's saying these are going to happen in life. This is going to be a part of humanity. These things and all this stuff he lists. No, in the middle of all these things, you're more than conquerors through him who loves us. Then he lists a bunch of these physical and spiritual type things that happen in life. And he ends with this. Nothing will be able to separate you from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. God's unconditional love for you. You know, I'm, I'm sometimes tired of seeing so many being so tired in life. Some of you are so exhausted with uh, life itself and the things that are going on in life, trying to feel this sense of belonging and we have to be accepted and, and we feel whole and so we, we strive for that in relationships in our life. You can grab one unconditional underlying thing about God is that he loves you. I, I was saved at 19, and for a lot of years, I knew I was saved, but I didn't really know that he loved me. Like, I felt like sometimes that God tolerated me in, in my life because of what I had, was doing or not doing, that I wasn't living up to the measure of what Christ's following should be, that I would earn a fullness of his love. Anybody ever struggle that way? I did for a long time. And, in the, and then why is that? See, because in this life, we usually have some condition to love. In the world we live in with humans, usually love is attached to some level of condition in our life. Often life is programmed in our life to become conditional love. So we really wrestle with God loving us without any condition. It, it might be that uh, if you got good grades, your parents really show an expression of love to you. But if they drop down to maybe C's where I lived, maybe you feel a little less love because of it. I don't know that that's the case, but it, it, I've, I've seen it. Maybe that happens sometimes. Maybe you have friends that you really trusted and you believed in and you know you love them. And, and a lot of times your best friends are now your worst enemies because there was this condition attached. And then now, now the love is gone and the separation is gone and the relationship is, is, is severed. Because in humanity, in this carnal, physical world, a lot of times love has condition to it. Maybe you uh, grew up at a young age and you heard your parents always saying how much they loved each other. You saw that, that physical expression that this is what love is. These two are here for each other. They give themselves away to each other. That's a good model. And then as years go on, you don't hear it anymore. Before you know it, all you hear is fighting, and now they're getting a divorce. And you struggle with, what is love? There was a condition to their love, and now it's not there anymore. But God, you say God's love is, has no condition. But almost everywhere in the world around me is love attached to some sort of condition. And we struggle with that. And that unsure place really creates this uh, uh, a lack of understanding of God's really unconditional love, and we create this belief system that we kind of live our life by. It might be that you're, you live in this way, that you're, you're heads down, you have guilt and you have shame, and, and you've just believed about your life that you're unlovable. That's just kind of where your, your safe mode of living is. Maybe your head's way too high and you're really self-exalted and you think you're better than all the rest because you just don't want to risk getting out there. So you just got to love yourself a lot more because you need the love and that's the safest place for you. It's not healthy either. Maybe you're earning love, doing anything and everything because I will earn the love I need and that's how I have to get love by earning it. Why? Why do we do this? Why is this sometimes the way... We go and, and, and the things that we let rule our life because we don't fully understand maybe the, or make personal maybe the, the fullness of God's love to our life. In school, I wasn't the greatest student, wasn't the greatest athlete, wasn't the greatest friend, wasn't the most popular. And I think looking back in my early years of Christianity, I think maybe I just, I just had to do a little more of this and a little less of that for really to be fully loved by God. That's, that's not a great place to live in. See, so often the pain and the loss and the tragedy of our life 
is kind of the filter of how we see God's love for us. For some reason, when things come against us, when there's, when there's brokenness or there's pain or there's suffering, it, somehow that's attached to God allowed or, or, or he loves me less because of it. It's, it's, like, a, it's like a filter to our life. The, the events of our life, the, the happenings around our life. Filters change how you see things, right? You know, you go on Snapchat and you see somebody with bunny ears, you realize they don't really have bunny ears, right? It's just a filter. But it looks like they do. Right? It, the filter makes you see something different than what it really is. If you get a black and white lens and put it on a camera and look out over the campus, everything is going to be what? Black and white. Now, it's really all color, but because of the filter you're looking through, it changes what you see. And sometimes the pain and the loss and the tragedy of our life, it filters in a negative way how we really see God and his love for us. I don't have to do this or that. God's going to still love me. I don't got to be better than I am. I want to be, I should be, but it won't change that God loves me. Maybe I'm living right as much as I can. Maybe I'm living in sin and it's really messing up my life. It will never change how much God loves me. Never change that. Maybe you struggle with that this morning. And you're really honest about it. Because but what's happening in life gives you a different view of maybe God's not really happy with you. Or, or you know God, you, maybe you feel this way, you know God loves people. It, it says his love has no condition, but, but, but not for me. Like for most people, but I'm like on the B squad, and, and I'm okay just having like half God's love because of who I am or what I've done or where I've been. Let's look at these scriptures, really great scriptures to just give you hope. It's John 15 and 9. As the Father has loved me, this is what Jesus said. How much do you think the Father loved Jesus? A lot. Right? John 15, 9. Is it up there? Do we have that? As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love or stand or accept my love. We sing the song, Jesus loves me, this I know. But a lot of times in my life, I really didn't know. First John 3 and 1. See what great love the Father has lavished on us. That we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. See, he's saying, hey, take a look. How great is the love of God, the Father, that he's lavished on us it, it, with excitement. He's saying, don't you see where you're at when you feel like maybe you're disconnected and God doesn't love you like he used to or he could love you differently? Come on up. He's lavished his love on this. It means he heaped it on, he smothered it onto your life. See how much the love of the Father has lavished on you. That you should be called his children the children of God. And then John 3, 16. For God so loved you. That's how you have to take it personal. Sometimes they say, God so loved the world, he gave his only son. But all the world but me, because maybe I don't deserve it. Maybe I didn't earn it. Maybe I, I'm not living like I should, and I, and I know I should be, but I'm not. And, and if we struggle with really understanding that God loves you, you can't do anything to remove the level of his love. You can't work harder to get more of it. You can't mess up enough to take any of it away. And, we, and that crashes against the world we live in that does have condition on love. You do me wrong, I'm gonna love you a little less. You do me right, I'm gonna love you a little more. And so what we hope for today is that as we pray, God really just puts into your spirit, his spirit that says, hey, you, you're okay. You're okay being safe that I love you I never will stop loving you you don't have to earn it you don't got to hide from God if you've done wrong his love is unconditional it will never change repeat this with me God loves me so much that he let his son Jesus die for me God loves you. 
Now I want to give us a chance to pray this morning. I know there's times, maybe this is you this morning, that you really struggle with understanding how deep God loves you, that it has no attachment to it. And you really need to experience that love this morning. So I want to do this. We did this when, back when, uh, when Joel was here. I love the concept. I want us to pray. I want the staff to pray for us. So I'm going to have the staff and then any senior, if you're a senior and you're willing to pray with somebody, not mandatory, you decide. So if the staff and teachers and any senior who wants to be available to pray for people, just stand up and move to the outside back wall or the side walls. Just go and just kind of separate, just kind of spread out a little bit. Now we're going to have a, just a quiet time here, so don't, don't talk. Just try to keep it the right atmosphere. And we got 10 minutes. I wanted to have a time. Listen, guys. Shh. Be reverent. Be reverent. Maybe the one next to you really is struggling to know God loves them without any condition. You guys spread out a little bit. So we got staff, teachers, seniors willing to pray. Let's all pray together. And then after I'm done praying, if you need prayer to really ask God, please, I need to know this. I need to experience your Holy Spirit in my heart to, to, to change maybe my thinking of how much you love me. I just want you to step out and, and go to any one of these people. And that's what we're praying about today. God would really seal that in your heart. And you can walk out of here whether you have done good or done wrong. It won't change anything about how deep God loves you. Let's pray together first. God, we thank you this morning for your love. Nothing can separate us from the love you have for us. Not our issues, our the things that have come against us, the, the pain, the sorrow, the loss of our life, the unanswered questions of why has this happened to me? That's there, but it, it will not take away that we are all a tan in your eyes because of you, Jesus. So God, help us to understand this morning. God, Holy Spirit, penetrate our heart and remove the doubt or the lie or the false thinking that we're less than, that we, we can't be fully loved by you because of whatever's going on in our life. So God, use this time now to speak to the hearts of your people. Assure them that there is no condition to your love. You gave your life. You love them unconditionally. Do it this morning in Jesus' name. So quietly, if you would, if you want a prayer, just get up and go to, just move to somebody. One or two of you in little groups, just go ahead and let's all stand up. And if you want to move out and go get prayer, we're going to, we've got some time, so don't leave. But if you need prayer, go to somebody, ask them to pray with you. Let's spend a few minutes doing that.
guys got to be reverent. Let's not talk. Let's not talk unless you're up praying. So just close your eyes and pray. And if you need prayer, come up or go to the sides. But let's not be talking while we're praying. Let's all join hands with somebody. Just bow your heads. Join hands. Bow your heads. Shh. Just close your eyes. Bow your heads and join hands with somebody. God, may we see what great love the Father has lavished on us. You call us your children. We're not outside the door, not allowed in. We have free access to you. God, we need in this crazy world these young people live in, they need to know without a doubt, whatever their day brings, whatever hardship has overtaken them, that the love of God is overpowering of that. That you are...